Hey guys, it's MazeMan112 here. Today I'm bringing you guys a flawless victory. Uh, this was on my way. Uh, this is a little uh, road to Diamond Camel that I've been doing. And uh, this is with the Vector. I have no attachments, no perks on it to go ahead and kind of add to it. Uh, I'm not saying this is any kind of crazy gameplay or anything like that. But, um, you know, it's my best to this date for a flawless victory. But go ahead, and today is Mondays with MazeMan. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is go ahead and try to answer some of you guys' questions real quick. So let's go ahead and go through the list. Uh, the first question we have here is about scuff controllers and do I recommend them? Um, yes, I do in short. I guess um, I'm actually going to do a review over scuff controllers actually here in a little bit. So I'll go in a little bit more detail uh, at that point in time with it. But I'm really loving the scuff controller. Like I said, I actually am a recent player who recently switched to the tactical layout. And it takes a little bit to get used to it. But once you are used to it, um, it's definitely the way to go. And um, the scuff controller just kind of adds to that. It's really smooth in everything you do. It does take a little bit to get used to the panels in the back. And also your joystick, the buttons on your joysticks are a little bit different. Um, it's almost like you have to hit them purpose purposefully or uh, they, just, they just don't go off where you have a lot of the panic knife type situations with the old controllers. You don't really have that much of a problem um, with the, the new, uh, with the scuff controllers. But I will go over a review in depth a little bit more probably late next week and uh, look forward to that. Going on to the next question. My family is in financial need and I'm not sure what to do. Do I concentrate on college or go get a part-time job? And, um, you know, you never really said how old you were, so I'm not too sure if you are already currently in college or you're in high school getting ready to prepare yourself for college. So I'll go ahead and answer the question for both ways. Um, if you're in high school getting ready to prepare you for yourself for college, uh, you definitely should be doing that because as a parent, um, they want the best for their child, regardless of what that means. And, um, you know, so try to line yourself up with becoming a successful adult while trying to help your family. So whether or not this is, you know, getting a job and going to school part-time, uh, if that's what you have to do to support them, that's okay. Um, really, if you need to, sit down and talk with your parents and uh, try to get uh, a, a little bit of a, a gauge of what they want you to do, what they expect from you, and what they really need at this point in time. Um, you know, maybe you think they're financially strapped and they're doing all right you know what i mean just some things kind of came up a little bit of uh expenditures that you didn't expect and um kind of you know left them a little bit short change for the, the moment uh but just have a heart to heart with them now let's go ahead and say that you're already in college and your mom has told you that um you know we're not gonna be able to pay the mortgage this month uh we're gonna wind up losing the house if we don't do something uh then my suggestion would be um you know Sometimes you have to be an adult earlier than you would like. Um, you know, if they need your help, go ahead and, and, and try finding that job, finding what you could do, whether or not it's just chores around the house. Maybe it's helping out with the housework that creates more time available for, you know, the adults in the house to go ahead and, and work some extra jobs or work some overtime without, you know, worrying about what's going on at the house at that particular point in time. Um, like I said, just have a heart to heart with them. And figure out what you can do to help out. It could be just little things that you could do. Um, and also just understanding that, you know, the world is not made of money. Your parents are not made of money. So quit asking for, you know, the luxuries in life that, you know, most people would just take for granted. And um, just start enjoying the company that is around you. It's a very difficult situation to be in very early. Um, like I said, just have a heart and heart and, and see exactly where we sit. Because sometimes the actual perception of what you think you're in is not what the situation really is. Third question I have right here is Keemstar. I did a video and um, he's asking whether or not I decide whether or not he's a good or bad guy. And no, I haven't. I really don't know. I think that he's a little confused himself at this point in time. I think he's just so used to being part of that a-hole gamer, that whole, you know... Uh, FAG army and all that kind of stuff where you kind of go around and bully people to a certain extent but um so he's trying to do this new agency and he's having a hard time uh staying unbiased and and really you know separating the professional Keemstar from the, the DJ Keemstar the troll and uh you know at this point in time I think he has good intentions but he's out to get the views I mean as much as he'll say that well, I'm not going to partner in this channel, which is what he was saying in the beginning. But what he did was just created a new Drama Alert Nation channel away from his DJ Keemstar. 
And um, I don't blame him. He's got a little daughter. Go ahead and feed her. You might as well. I find this stuff semi-interesting. Um, it just seems like there's a lot more since he started that channel than there was before. And it's, it's starting to cause little rifts between friends in the community. Um, and not only just the community in general. Next question right here is, what are my opinions on PewDiePie leaving Machinima? Uh, if you guys don't know, PewDiePie is like the biggest gaming commentary out there. He, he really doesn't do Call of Duty. He was the one that first started doing Slender and, and doing some of those scary stuff that, you know, a lot of people say White Boy kind of copied off of him. And uh, he's got, I think, like 3 million subscribers, something like that. So he is like the biggest player in town. And uh, he left Machinima. And he went to Maker Studios, which is huge news uh, from the behind-the-scenes side of things because Machinima was considered the, the Rolls-Royce, the Cadillac, the Coupe de Ville. It was the best, uh, you know, third party that you could partner with at this point in time, especially if you were a gamer. And now it looks like they have overextended themselves and got themselves, uh, you know, a little bit cash-strapped at this point in time. And some of these other companies who weren't just gaming are able to go ahead and get into the action and steal some pretty good talent at this point in time to get PewDiePie. That, that's pretty huge. My personal opinion is, I think by him leaving and being probably one of the highest, you know, CPM partners on the program at the time, um, it's going to really open it up for a lot of other people. It's going to be a lot of extra cash flow for for others inside the, the partnership. Um, so, personal opinions, I don't think it's going to affect anything. None of this partnership stuff. It never affects the content anyway. So. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, just know that PewDiePie is no longer with Machinima. Next question we have here is kind of an interesting one. He says, I'm 14 years old. I am a freshman in high school, and I have yet to hit puberty. I get nervous when showering or when it's gym class time with the other boys. What can I do? And um, I was actually in a similar situation. I, I was a late bloomer, and all you can do is just be yourself. And high school could be rough. We all understand that, but... Given that point of view, don't even worry about it because, um, you know, you're, you'll catch up. Everybody winds up catching up. Nobody goes in through an entire adulthood without ever going into puberty. Um, you know, and just even poking fun at yourself can kind of make light of the situation and really ease any kind of tensions or anything like that that you guys may have or, or anything like that. And you really, you're not forced to shower or anything like that, but, um, just say, yeah, okay, I know, there's something I can do about it, fucking sucks, yep, yep, it sucks, and, uh, you know, I, I know it's hard to, to say, you know, well, how am I supposed to do that, don't set yourself up for failure then, you know, um, try being the last one in the shower if you have to take the shower, or try not taking the shower at all, whatever you need to do, just remember, be comfortable in your own skin, and then this is really what's the, a key in life in general, is uh, you are who you are, and, and you really can't change that. All you can do is embrace it, and uh, things will be okay. You'll you'll catch up to everybody else, and you know you'll be just another one of the guys. So um, you know, good luck, and, and and let me know how that goes. The next question I'm gonna go ahead and answer was a question ask, asking whether or not I think that the PlayStation 4, the Steam Box, or the Xbox 360 would be the new giant in the new console war. And uh, my personal opinion here is, I still think Xbox is gonna reign king. And uh, I, I say this just because it seems like so many people already have their base on Xbox as far as, you know, my friends all play it on here and everything like that. And this is going to be a new opportunity to go ahead and buy that. But um, people like what they have at this current moment. PlayStation 3, when it first came out, had the Blu-ray, so it was supposed to have way better graphics and everything. It's supposed to be a, a higher level system, the Xbox 360, and it's still lost out in the race. And I just feel like um, a lot of the... You know, hardcore gamers get the PlayStation 3s, where your casual gamers, your first-person shooters, your competitive gamers tend to get your Xboxes. Let me know what your guys' thoughts, feelings are on any of the subjects are. Make sure you guys voice them in the comment section below. Make sure you guys hit that like button, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. And now for some videos that you guys may have missed. On the left, we have the Black Ops 2 Ain't No Rest for the Prestige parody. Make sure you guys go ahead and check that out. It's a good laugh. And on the right, we have the Astro A50 review. I just put this out yesterday. Uh, going over the new set of headset I just got. And um, check these out, guys.